Hey guys, welcome back. Um, just got a bug nut X here. I haven't really done much to it. I'm still waiting on getting access to the metal that I'm going to be using to box the front, box the back, and uh, get ready to do the gas tank. Um, do some uh, work to the back. We're gonna probably gonna be picking up a turbo here for that thing pretty soon here. And in the meantime, uh, Jason finally picked up some uh, parts for the Red Panda. We went ahead and, well, he got a few miscellaneous things like uh, trunk shocks for the back because that way it actually holds itself up. We put finally get the door panel back in. Let's put the window motor in it and as you can see, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not, but the door, the window is obviously down. But we get the wind, we get the window motor in it right now. Uh, of course, the air freshener, all that good stuff. And uh, we got some extra goodies here that we felt that you know deserve some you guys' attention. And uh, we'll see what we got here. Oh yeah. I got uh, an eight pillar I've, pod. Yeah, eight pillar pod. I got a, a basically a air fuel ratio wide band here. The brand for AEM. Yep. And we're gonna we're gonna show you guys how to wire that up. This is kind of some of the fuses i just decided it doesn't hurt to have a whole bunch of fuses but yeah this particular guy requires a five amp fuse so decided to you know make it legit not just you know do it half button not put a fusible link in there but yeah nothing special guys it's just a standard triple uh, i got it at autos or actually pet boys uh uh for 25 dollars and 52 cents not that's, bad and that's yeah not Four bad Gonna pull that thing up and get ready to put it in. I mean, it kind of feels kind of heavy. I don't know. What, what do you got? What do you think? Kind of feels heavy. Eh, I felt those things beforehand, so it's not. You think it's the packaging? I think there's something else in there. Is there? Wait, what? The. Why are there. Wait, 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 wait. This, this is a joke, right? It's a gauge. Hold on. Pod. What? Gauge. Wait. You kidding me? Dude. I think somebody returned. Universal tri triple tri pod. Yeah, it doesn't come. See, also mosquitoes. See, it says also available from APC. The fuck? See, look, web web oh, order. Customer pickup. I mean, this is a customer pickup, but it says gauge pod. Why is does it, it say anything about gauges not included? It's just a pod, dude. I think I, I think I just got three free gauges, man. Clean OEM look, easy to install. Holds three two and one sixteenth universal gauges, triple pod. Yeah, I think I got three free gauges, man. What a score. Goddamn mosquitoes. Sorry about that, guys, but yeah. Dude, I just scored. <laughs> yeah, you could tell it's been used. I How? think because look, they combine these. The fuck? It look, yeah, because look, the fitting's missing. Okay. Yeah, you could. I, I have a feeling somebody returned this and forgot to take their gauge. <laughs> I guess it's. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Because it's not APC, dude. That's not APC model. It's not? Oh, yeah, you're right. It's not. What's MW? Color chain button. Yeah, right here it says holds. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get that. Let's see here. One of these things we can, I can quickly identify. The marks are not there, dude. Because APC, that's an old company, dude. You're right. APC should be right in the middle, right up top. I think I, I just, I think I got myself a score, guys. I think for twenty five dollars, twenty six dollars and something. I, I almost <laughs> don't believe this. Uh, and no, guys, I'm not playing, uh, like, seriously. Like, we just opened the box. But what the hell's MW? Seriously, what? what's that logo? I mean, here, Matt, can you... Maybe, can some, maybe somebody in the comment section, can you guys maybe inform me? Am I just completely crazy? I mean, we for, can do a quick Google search on that, but... I mean, for nearly $26, can you guys... Let me see. Am I just crazy, or am I...
Hold the camera real quick. Because the nurses got the brackets aren't there. That's what I'm saying. These are just twist tied. I think someone just like kind of started what they were thinking about installing it. See? It looks like somebody just kind of just just got an idea just kind of trying to figure it out. I'm absolutely dumbfounded. I'm gonna be honest guys, uh I think I want I think I, I got a steal on this uh for twenty five or twenty six dollars. <laughs> I don't know if they're the greatest gauges, but I mean this one gives you oil pressure, this one gives you water temp, and then this one gives voltage. Can you install any Y band? So uh which so Matt, you know, since you you know, you've already done this install in your particular vehicle here. Mm -hmm. how, how do you so over there. yeah, I don't know if you guys can see between the bushes. Matt's already installed this uh, particular product. And what's nice about this one is that it's shallow. It's well, a very what shallow make, interface. Why, why is shallow important? Shallow is important because if you have a dash and the plate of it itself is like if you got a lot of clutter in the back of it, you're not going to want a deep one like that. This one keeps it short and simple and straight to the point. So basically, you're saying we can cram more stuff in the back of it. Pretty much. Not the way about it either. I thought it was my car. Shall be this hard to pull? Oh, you know what? that might actually help. Yeah, when I got mine from uh, Amazon, the package was all messed up. Oh, well, that's the reason why she wasn't coming out. Yeah, see? It's shallow. But fortunately for yours, we should be able to get get away with and uh, use all that stuff. Now, have you thought about where you want it in? Or where you want this uh, gauge in there? The bottom, middle, the top? What? I don't know yet. I honestly don't know, guys. Uh, I'm still kind of doing this on the fly here. It's not the hard install. These things are... Um, and this is the, it's going to be, it's just got to set its own, it's already got its uh, own little tune set up, so, oh, she's probably hitting me up, no big deal, but, uh, yeah, just put a wide band in it so we can actually have a good idea of what we are running, so that way when we'll get it tuned, it's one less thing our tuner has to do, and it also tells us if we're running too, rent, or too lean or too rich, and lately, with my car, I've noticed that if the car is running for a long time, like a half hour or so, and this extreme heat, it starts to run a little bit rich when I'm sitting at a light. But when I go wide up and throttle, it's not coming down as much. It comes down to like to 12.4, 12.5, and that's basically it. But yeah, here's the wide band we need to put in. Uh, we've already got a no 2 bung on the exhaust already as it is, and um, that's pretty much about it. Looks it. like it's pre. Is it pre-greased? Yeah, it already comes with anesthes. See that, guys? Perfect. Anesthes. What's nice about yours, though, with your gauge pop, is that it can actually, since it's got a short sidewall, we can put it wherever we want it at. Well, they were smart enough they didn't solder everything together. That's what I'm saying. I think they were prepping it, and then they might have changed their mind, or... You know what? I seriously wonder if they're scratching their heads right now. Whoever bought this. I mean, I hate to say it, but. Yeah. I mean, hate to say it, it's their loss, my win. I mean, their loss or gain. That's, too, that's typically how it's worded. I'm special, guys. I'm real special. So. So yeah, uh, Lugnut X just got some new gifts. I still have a bunch of uh, cleanup to do here. Yeah, guys. Honestly, we uh, obviously I'm not gonna make a video, but we ended up getting ourselves a nice little lawnmower, and of course, you know, yeah, we had we had to go the Honda route, guys. Ha you know, Honda lawnmower. Yeah, it's a three-year warranty, surprisingly, and it's a four-stroke, so. And the best part is, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, are, you know, cut your own grass or do it for a living, but uh, 
You guys don't even have to go to the gas station to go buy it. Like, you guys can already buy non-ethanol gasoline uh, at my local Lowe's. Uh, they actually recommended this. See? It burns less, apparently. It apparently lasts longer in your engine. It allows you I was yeah I was more excited about it being ethanol free because typically these lawnmowers they tend to gum up especially when they're being you know yeah exactly there we go because I'm definitely thinking again boost gauge okay this gauge I don't know what you I don't know what to put on the third one where would you want this at? The very bottom? Where? That's basically how it's going to look in it. I'm thinking to put it at the bottom one. Okay. If you guys disagree with me, obviously comment section below. Please tell me. Damn, that's a tight squeeze. Actually, <laughs> that actually fits pretty nicely. I hope so, yeah. This is a 52 millimeter. They even fit. I don't know if it's going to fit or not. Oh, it does fit. I was thinking that maybe one of the sides, the uh, sidewall here, would be too close. That's what I was thinking. I think a, uh, AEM, you know, I think they might have thought about these universal pieces. Now, what I did for mine is since I didn't actually run it into the ECU itself, um, I just ran a power course. You make your, you can make your own five amp. Uh, yeah, if you guys are fusible in link, five amp fusible link. Um, I actually made one for that car because um, I'm too cheap. I didn't want to go out and buy this stuff. I don't want to buy that. Plus, the wire that you're splicing into, it's not that thick. Seriously, this wire right here is not that thick, so I didn't see you know, a point of trying to connect one of these guys to these wires. It's like, yeah, forget it. I'm done. I'm not gonna worry about that. Yeah, me and Matt sometimes have different philosophies when it comes to uh, comes to things, but obviously his way works, and my way will work just as well. Maybe. <laughs> oh, don't don't tell me that. Maybe. All right. Now, what's nice is he just got the fine. I'm not too familiar how this guy comes on out. I'll be honest, I've never pulled it off myself. Um. Hand me a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna hand you the camera. Well, guys, but yeah, keep, keep, you know, keep it company, buddy. Keep going, keep going. Just get the stuff. Oh, don't you dare! No armpit here. This is my first time actually doing this on a Del Sol, so keep that in mind. Um, but uh, looks like we're doing with like a, a Torx bit. Uh, I need a flathead. You want a nylon pry tool? Uh, flathead, because there's screws. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Screws right there. You guys can see it. I probably can't. Maybe just a little bit of the shadow. That's too big. That's probably too small. Yeah. Too small. Hand me the other one we were using earlier. Uh, it's, yeah, I was going to say, that one's probably too long. What about this guy? That might work. I don't have my Torx bits here with me. I have Torx bits. Yeah, I'm probably need Torx bits. What, what size is it? Let's see. Is it a large one or a smaller one? Here, try these two. Tell me if these. Tell me if these fit. Yeah, that was just a wipe to call to tell me she's a robber. And she's gonna go sleep downstairs. That's about it. Larger or bigger? Oh, dude, that is fucking, that, that, that's golden. I like that. Uh...
see from down here a little bit. Oh, man, these mosquitoes. Tell you, I'm telling you, I want to bring that stuff tomorrow. Yeah, it's a uh, mosquito season over here, guys. Uh, I might have a little bit of a glaze on my forearm. Or my, yeah, my arms. Typically, when I sweat, I glaze. enough this is gonna be harder than it is to install the cluster uh, install the gauge itself I'm not talking about that either because I've already done this in fact I always was a bit hesitant on doing it myself when I first started doing this yeah the only thing extra we're gonna be doing with mine other than actually mounting it to the uh, a a pillar right but, uh, Where's uh, Phillips head again? There's that. There's a I flathead. Think flathead. I, return, I think I returned. I think I returned. Put it back. Got it. Your portable toolbox. Whereabouts is it on your system? Is that the one that goes to the uh, the oxygen sensor? Yes, it is. It's this plug right here. And then this one right here goes into it, into the uh, gauge gives you readings and then the only thing you have to plug in on that end is your ground obviously and your five volts or five and then right here see this blue wire guys that's the one that's gonna go to D10 on the ECU I hope it actually is D10 because I'm not 100% sure but I'm, I'll verify it but I, I'm I'm really confident it's D, D10 I, I have a printout actually either D10 or D13 Actually, my second. I know I sent it to you a while ago. It's getting a little bit dark out here, Right here. Oh, look at that, guys. Yeah, this is typically where your cruise control would have been. Yeah, we don't need no cruise control, guys. No you cruise control. Right uh, you control the cruise that way. Alright, I'm gonna my toe. Okay, guys, uh, we'll be right back.
So guys, yeah, right there, right in uh, Honda, right there at uh, D10. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that, but there's actually... Oh, there we go. You don't want cell phone taking casualty there, but they actually, guys, uh, within Honda, there's a tab called Closed Loop. And then what you need to do is actually disable the O2 heater and then make sure you guys, uh, the Y-band input source, you guys do D10, do uh, voltage off offset. Uh, it'll vary on, on, on other models, but on this particular model, it'll be a negative 0.2. And then right here, voltage zero. And then on the middle option, we got 2.49, and then at five volts, you got 20. So this is kind of a, a quick and dirty way of do, doing a, the Honda a part of the uh, the actual Y-band install. So, so yeah, sorry for the uh, intermittent pause there. Uh, we got a little distracted. Wife called, my wife called, so we kind of trying to kind of kind of took a break here but uh yeah right now i don't know if you guys can see dude your freaking bum was loose maybe that's why i'm having issues but yeah right now no matt is not dead guys he's not pretending to be under halfway dead on the car but he's actually trying to wire I'm this moving. sucker <laughs> how am i pretending to be dead here oh i mean when, when i was when i was videotaping your legs were kind of steady and it's dark over here Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that exhaust right there. Look at all that nice soot. Anyways, yeah, I'm in the other, uh... Oh, the real one? Yeah. Oh, here we go, guys. We are actually going to, uh, actually use what that, uh, button is supposed to be used for. What's nice is that it's about a 45-minute angle. Actually, what? Yeah, doesn't it say in the instructions to have it mounted at a 45? Uh, I don't remember seeing that, but you you mentioned that. I don't know if I can get my camera in there. Guys, let me uh, get down low. I know you guys like to see the action. Anyway. There we go. I believe it's at a 45 degree angle. It's on exhaust, and we are right now directly behind the block. Just below the intermediate or mid shaft. But anyways, that's the uh, wide band and it appears to be at a 45 degree angle. You have to uh, use any special tools to tighten that thing on? Uh, probably a 27. I mean, it looks like you got, that looks like a special oxygen sensor wrench. No, it's not. Actually, mine don't even work on it. Like mine's actually, I think mine's actually too big. What the hell is that? Ooh, get blinded. You see the light. Oh, shit, never mind. It actually does fit. That's weird, though. It didn't fit the uh, the bung. Yeah, because the bung is probably something different. There we go. She is tight. Yep. Definitely recommend. Yeah, sorry for the terrible lighting, guys. Unfortunately, having having full-time jobs, you don't get to do this stuff at you know during the day. During the day, so except for a weekend, like, it's nice out. As in, not too hot. Yeah, let's be real. It's about 87 degrees, and it's nearly nine o'clock, guys. <laughs> that doesn't include the humidity, which it's probably about 92. So. There's a sensor. So we're what we're doing here. Well, I've already ran it through down at the bottom here. Uh, that's the hole where the cruise control used to be. Right around through there is already down in. Um, I didn't run it down. I ran it, kept it up and went straight across above the uh, the, the foot pedal assembly. So that you don't have to worry about it catching on anything, becoming snapped, or anything like that. And it's already been right through the dash. But as I can already see, there's plenty of slack in it still. So we ran through the dash and it's all the way up top here, just waiting to be plugged in. That's it. Perfect. Um, and then the other thing we need to do is, I'm not too sure what you want to do is use the fusible link, 
the custom one or use your guys? I want to use my guy. Okay. I, I just want to show the guys, you know, we have different options out there. Because yours is kind of cool too, your option as well. I'm going to slightly set that there, guys. Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh. Well, that's how much slack we've got. Can't. The other thing I need to do too is make sure the way it's running underneath. Yeah, so it doesn't hit the exhaust. It's not gonna even come close to hitting the exhaust. It's coming straight up. It's not gonna catch. Uh, I was actually worried about it catching the uh, intermediate shaft too. Just so you know, the battery's about to die in it, too, I think. It's that one bar. And we always do part two. We can always do part two in the daylight. Say, hey, we come back tomorrow. Let me just finish it up. Sure. Well, the problem is you get all this extra wire right now. Yeah, guys, right now, uh, with the, uh, unfortunately, the GoPro battery is about to die on us, but we one, we? yeah, we got another one probably somewhere, but it's, I don't think I charged it, but yeah, basically right now we're just trying to figure out what we're going to do with this excess, this excess cave one. We're probably going to tuck it inside the dash at this point. So once we uh, figure it out, we'll, uh, we'll get back to you guys. Hey guys, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Mother Nature has decided to take a rain dump on us. So fortunately, we can't leave the car open with all the electronics and wires and we wanted to solder and do everything the right way. Fortunately, we're gonna have to take a break on this one, but yeah, I normally uh, we, we would do stuff in the garage, but Fortunately, uh, city code and city law does not allow me to uh, put lug nut X in the driveway, at least in its current state. So we have to keep it in the uh, keep it in the uh, you know in the garage at this point. So we got to keep it in the headquarters. But yeah, at this point, uh, other than me blinding you guys there, but uh, yeah, at this point, uh, we're gonna have to kind of wrap it up at least for tonight. But uh, we're gonna do a little uh, special uh, transition, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, um, it's finally the following day. Sunny skies, and uh, we're getting ready to uh, hook up the Y bands up to the car. And um, we are not going to be hooking it up to the ECU due to a resistor needing to be cut or removed. There are two resistors actually, according to Jason. So we're just gonna go ahead and wire it the way I have mine wired up and call it a day. Then hopefully shortly we'll go get it tuned. Or go get both cars tuned because I need to get my car tuned as well. But uh, yeah, we are gonna be focusing on that for today's video and uh, this should be about it. Right now I'm looking for a... It's recording. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm looking for a, uh, there you go, this is how you find it. Okay, found one. Let's go into the camera, what you're looking for. <sighs> Yeah, but isn't it in time lapse right now? No, 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 it's just recording. Oh, Yeah, that should work right there. Basically, do a little bit of a trick here. I mean, it's not, not really ideal, but it'll, it'll work. Pretty much twist this. Good. 
put these two guys together just like so yeah the reason why I don't need the uh, that, that cap is because it's just gonna sit there and chill like that okay I got you yeah now taking this guy flip it There we go. We'll wait for the hiss sound to come up. It's gonna take probably about maybe 20, 25 seconds for it to warm up. Can't be low. I mean, I can try to fill it up some more, but. Yeah, that's working now. Might have been low. I, that's kind of odd to me. Yeah, I see the orange glow inside. You guys can see that. That's definitely confirmed that it is on. <laughs> there we go. It's not the prettiest thing, but it'll do the job. Now, being that we're in a well-ventilated area now, should pan out a lot better. The only thing I don't like what just happened there. Oh, okay, cool. Wow. Oh, I'm I'm happy for that. There was a gob of it that dropped. Now, I take my little wrench here and take this guy off. Bring the bean because this, you know, it's a torch, butane torch. So therefore the future tubing will really work a lot better. Or well do its job a lot better with this thing off. So what I'm gonna do is take the small guy first. Bring that up. See it's working? Perfect. 
now. Let's go down. Just like so. So there's right smack dab in the middle. Bingo. consistent, warmed up the whole way around. Good, so we shouldn't have any issues with it uh, not connecting. All right, and also just to confirm that it is indeed working, well, never mind, not to confirm it. Um, this is the ground wire. I'm gonna run this in place as well, preferably close to that fuse that we put in. Now it's also neat, that we did this in a way so if you ever want to move that hot side or move this wire to a different spot you can do that without any modifications or you can do it easier just pull the fuse pull the wire off bam that's it no questions asked now i just need to find a suitable ground for this guy but i'm also going to strip off a little bit more coating a little bit more surface area. You want to solder an eye hook? Nah. Just leave it the way it is. And find a bolt. Maybe there's a bunch of bolts back here. Right there. You want to show them? Well, I mean, it's just a quick demonstration. Light up? Yep, it's lighting up. Cool. It's gonna like roll on the heat side. Yep, it's gonna roll over the heat. You're gonna see it better on that side, but there's a little dial in here that comes on up. And with this heat, it's eventually gonna simply say it's ready. Well, not ready, but there we go. Yep, that's it. That's it, guys. I just confirm that it does indeed work. So now, what I need to do is grab a pin Now, this is overkill for this, but I'm too lazy to grab a winch. Yeah, we're kind of having the opposite, guys. Yesterday, we were too lazy, and now today we're using power tools. Alright, guys. Um, finished wiring up, got the ground hooked up, power's all hooked up, and uh, let me know what you guys think. the option to change where we want the power to come from without any issues at all. It literally is just a quick disconnect to pull a fuse, put another fuse in its, uh, put it in a spot where it stays on constantly because that's one thing I noticed about with this one already. This fuse that we chose, or that I chose actually, it's, it becomes a ground, or no it doesn't become a ground, it no longer becomes a hot when you crank. But when you put the key back in the run position, that's when it says to will power. Mine doesn't do that. Mine's just to turn the key, it remains at hot at all times. We have to find the fuse that does that in yours. Once we find the fuse that does that in yours, then you'll have no issues with it. It's not gonna shut off back off on you, then glue it back off and go to heat mode and then eventually warm up again. But yeah guys, it's actually running pretty good. It's uh coming around to a 13.05. Uh, 12, just border that, or just shy, jumping around in there. It's starting to warm up now, it's starting a little bit leaner. And that's this is just with one of my tunes, my engine does the exact same thing. And just to give you guys a quick understanding. Now, if I rev up on it a little bit, hold it up in there. I figured it was going to do that. Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys.
I saw, that's how we install the AEM wideband in this car. It's very easy and simple to do. It's not rocket science. This is my second time doing it. And that's pretty much about it. I mean, even a car that's tight like this was even easy to do. So guys, um, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and smack that bell. And if you guys have any uh, comments or concerns or have any concerns in general, just feel free to uh, leave, it, leave a comment below. And we will get back to you as soon as we can. And we actually do comment back. We give you guys as much information we, as we can. But other than that, have a good day. Peace.